How's it going, everyone? This is Mike Starr. <sighs> and today, um, I thought I'd do a different kind of video here. I thought I'd do a video about the, um, the day we lost Jimmy and Taco, right? This, this was a very, very, you know, scary time in my life. And um, for the most part, um, it will never happen again because I won't let it happen again. But it's a very stupid story and why it happened I don't know and it should never have happened and um, You all know Jimmy and Taco from my previous videos Jimmy the Chihuahua and Taco oh, Sorry, Jimmy the Poodle and Taco the Chihuahua <laughs> Okay, so anyways Get a zip of water before I okay. Boom Now everything in this story is 100% true No word of a lie, this stuff actually happened This is a true story, okay? So let me all tell you first <sighs> Okay, now let me all begin this story The story starts when my brother had just bought his new car, right? He had bought a second-hand car off, I think it was Gumtree, some website He went and picked it up And my cousin and I went in one car and he went in another car when we finally got back to my place, um, you know, we had to open up the side gate. So I opened up the side gate, went through the side gate, you know, and then I, had, I went through the front of the house. And then from there, I got my stuff together um, because I had arranged previously to meet my mate from the New, New Year's Eve video. That we're gonna to go to the movies and watch Mad Max 4. Uh, Mad Max 4 Fury Road. So we um so I, I got all my stuff and we're gonna eat dinner at his house first and then go to the cinema. So I got my stuff, got in my mum's car, because I used to borrow my mum's car at the time. She was um I don't know where she was, but she wasn't at home. And while I was leaving, my brother was on the phone to my grandfather and my cousin uh, was um, was there too, walking in and out of the house. Jimmy and Taco, well, they were in the house, right? But my brother, the fucking idiot, wasn't watching them. And, you know, the thing is, he let him out the backyard. And, um, yeah. So then from there, I drive to my friend's house. I'm starving. I haven't eaten food all day. We're at his house and he's cooking me up, he's cooking me something small because it was going to be a long time before the food was ready. My friend lives 10 minutes away from where I live and um, while I'm waiting for the food to be cooked, I'm starving, right? Uh, I get a phone call from my mom saying, uh, you know, Jimmy and Taco have gotten out, you know, someone forgot to close the side gate and... At this point, I had to go and look for them. So I closed the phone and I'm immediately out of there. I told my friend we have to go, told him what had happened. And I'm in my mum's car. I'm going at least 90 to 100 in a 60 zone. I'm speeding down the street. And um, cars that are fucking going slow behind me, I'm fucking beeping. I'm trying to swerve around them. I'm angry, you know. Anyone would set me off, I'd, I'd kill them, you know, because... They're my boys, you know, Jimmy and Tucker. They're my boys. They mean the world to me. And there are cars, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm going into oncoming traffic, going around cars. I'm doing all the illegal things you shouldn't do. And while I'm driving into an intersection near my house, I can see my cousin holding Jimmy, the, uh, the poodle. And, um, I, I, I thought at least, you know, one of them has been found. I hope the other one you know, has been found too. Sorry, I don't think that's the right way to say it. You know, and I thought... And then I get to this little intersection in my house and I can see my cousin Timmy holding Jimmy, the poodle, um, walking down the street and I'm calling out to him but he can't hear me. So I, um, I think to myself, 
one of them has been found. I hope that Taka has been found too, but I didn't know at the time if he was found or not. Um, and I thought he, I thought he had been found because if one of them was found, I thought the other one, you know, maybe the other one was with them. So I pulled the car to the side of the road, which was up the hill. And he, my cousin Timmy was at the bottom of the hill. And I just thought, you know what? I'm going to go to the house and see if Taka has been found. Went to the house. No, Taka wasn't found. This was a punch to the guts. So I continued looking in the car with my mum, driving around, looking for Taka, calling out, you know, calling out Daki, Jimmy and Taco, singing the song Jimmy and Taco, Jimmy and Taco, Jimmy, 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 Jimmy and Taco, 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 Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. But no. Nowhere to be found, right? And at this point, you know, prior to driving around, I should have mentioned, I, I went off at my brother, um, who was with his girlfriend at the time, in her car across the street. And I'm telling him, you fucking idiot, you fucking lost them, you fucking this, you that, you that. Anyways, but that wasn't helping the situation. So, back at the house, um, start calling up, um, you know, vets um, and the RSPCA. And I making, I make a missing, um, I tell them that, tell them what had happened and they make a note of it and I describe Taco to them. I've caught about three or four places and, you know, and he wasn't microchipped because, well, he was microchipped, but I didn't know if he was microchipped or not at the time because he was, we only had him at like a short time, maybe one or two months. He didn't have one of those collars with the names on the, on the coin and the number. And, um, you know, he didn't have a jumper, you know, like, you know, um, so they, they, um, so, so if anyone had found him, they, they wouldn't know if he belonged to anyone. So, yeah. And then my mum made everyone at the house some eggs and some, some tomatoes because we hadn't eaten and I couldn't stomach this stuff. I felt like I was going to throw up. I had a cup of tea, had some eggs and I just, I, I wasn't feeling well. Then a friend of my brother's had come over, some chick that he um, used to have sex with, but he is friends with her now. They went out looking. Um, even my friend that I was supposed to go to the movies with that day, he he said, um, you know, before that, that, um, sorry, I have to go home. It's late. Um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what else I can do, you know. So he went home. My brother went out with his friend looking. My older brother, not my eldest brother, he was at work, so he didn't know what had happened. But we didn't tell him because he was working and we don't want to, you know, you know, make him have a bad um, shift at work. So they went out looking and I was at home alone with my mum and I thought, you know what, I, I can't stay here. I can't just sit at home while he's out there. What am I going to do at home? If I can't just watch TV knowing that he's he's gone and he's out there. I can't, I can't do that. You know, I, I can't, I don't, I, you know, I can't do it. You know, I was, I was thinking maybe someone, you know, picked him up and took him in, but I, I didn't know for sure, you know. So I went out with my mom's car again, looking in the streets, asking people, asking my neighbors, asking everyone in the area. And some people in the area actually were looking for him too. Some lady walking, uh, a Pomeranian um, had already told me that my my brother had already asked her, um, you know, uh, if they had seen Taco, but they hadn't. And, you know, no one had, um, no one had seen him and going through the streets, calling out to him, no one had seen him. And, you know, I came back and, you know, my mum was at the front talking to that lady with the Pomeranian and, you know, a lot of people got involved, you know, a lot of people off the street got involved. Some younger lady who had never met before was looking for him because then she came back and she said, yeah, I looked for him. No, she said, she said to um, um, me and my mum because um, 
when I was out before that looking with my mum, she said, uh, are you the people looking for the Chihuahua? And we thought, oh, you, you know where he is? You found him? And she said, and we said, yeah. And she said, oh, well, I'm looking too. And we thought, oh my gosh, um, yeah. So my mum was at home and I was at home and I, you know, it was just, it was uh, me, my mum, Jimmy and I, and Jimmy was very lonely without his brother Taco. And it was very sad for Jimmy to be like that. And we were just, my mum said, I'm too tired. I was just there at, um, at home and just couldn't sit still. I said, all right, you know what, mum? I said, I'm going to go out one last look for him. We were out looking for him. This is at midnight, by the way. And it was about like six degrees. It was freezing, middle of winter. He had no jumper or nothing. And I said to him, I'm going to take Jimmy in the streets because I don't think he would have got very far. He's only small. So I took Jimmy with Taka's jumper, put it up to Jimmy's nose so Jimmy can smell. And hopefully the scent of Taco, Jimmy will lead me to Taco. And I went through some streets and went to where my old house was, which is down the street from where I live now. And I went looking in some alleyways. But I went in the direction that Jimmy took me. Jimmy was just taking me whichever way he was taking me, you know. And um, he was just pulling me and I was just going wherever Jimmy was going. Went around the block. Um, threw an alleyway singing Jimmy and Taco, the Jimmy and Taco song. Jimmy, 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 Jimmy and Taco, 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 Taco. And I thought, you know, if he's anywhere, he'll come out if he's close by. Otherwise, someone would have taken him into their house. So, I get to the front of my old house, right? And I think to myself, there's not really much else I can do right now. I'm going to go home. And I'm going to make... You know, I'm going to make pamphlets and I'm going to put them up if anyone's seen Taco. And I said to Jimmy, he was sitting down at the front of my old house in between my old next to the neighbor's house. I said, come on, Jimmy, let's go home. Let's go and find Taco. Let's um, make these pamphlets, right? Because that's what I had in my mind. I was set to make these pamphlets. I was always, um, you know, I was always, you know, I was always on the move. I thought, you know, I'm not going to sit down. I'm just going to always be doing things that I can do to find him. So this is no word of a lie. Right then and there, I was about to lift up my leg and move. I was um, immobile, just standing up. And I saw some cat's tail go between my legs. I looked down and I see this black tail. And I think to myself, hmm. I said, oh, look, there's a cat next to us. And I looked back. And that wasn't no cat. That was Taco. It was right there next to me. And I thought, oh, my gosh. All my, all my worries and my fears have just gone. So I pick up both Jimmy and Taco under my arms. Taco was a bit dirty. And when I saw him, he had this little grin on his face. And he was waddling to me because he was next to me. It was like, it was waddling a bit closer. Um, I pick them both up and I run home and I'm screaming in the streets, yes, yes. And I was happy. I was just shouting and I was cheering and I was just so happy. And I opened the front gate of my house. My mom was home asleep and I knock on the front door. I was banging on it. And my mom said, coming, coming. And I said, I found him. I found him. And she's like, what? And she opens, she opens the, um, front door and, um, she opens up the front door and then she picks him up and hugs him and puts a jumper on him, puts him food, puts him water. My mom calls up my brother, my brother Dimitri, and says, you know, um, we found him. Like, I found him. And um, my brother comes back with this Scottish woman that he used to bang. And, um, you know, we're all there with him. And my brother knew he'd fucked up, so he kept on repeating he did a good job. He did a good job. He did a good job. We're very lucky. He did a good job. And he was saying this for like three to four minutes, like no joke. <laughs> he did a good job. 
And I was hugging him and I was yelling and I'm like, is this really him? Is this really him? I couldn't believe it, right? So then that was it. Uh, I caught up my friend. My friend was sleeping and he woke up from his sleep and he's like, I'm glad you caught me, you know? The one that I was supposed to go to the movies with who helped look for Jimmy and Taco. You know, I'm glad you found him because I was, I was thinking about you, you know? My mate was saying to me and um, then my brother later, because that was like at 12, 12 in the night. My brother came back at like four in the morning. My brother who was working and we told him the story. And then um, we ended up getting all the bricks we could find. We had about over a hundred bricks and we put them at the back door. And we bricked up the back um, where the gate is so they couldn't go under as well. All along the fences we made sure we, um, we proofed it. And uh, that was it. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's the story. And, um, you know, we were very lucky to find them. Um, you know, we had, um, before Jimmy and Taco, I, I had um, two poodles, Mango and Sunny, and we lost Sunny one day. And um, very lucky we found him, but someone brought him back, luckily, when I was in year seven. Um, like a couple of days after they found him and it, it was it was traumatizing and it was hard you know um, but they have since passed on and there's not a day that goes past where I don't think of them because I love them and I forever will um, but yeah that's it for this video I'm Mike Starr and I'll see you all tomorrow have a good night